Hello. Something completely unusual today, something totally different. If I had a second channel, this is the sort of thing it would be suitable for. It's uh, a large quantity of equipment, mostly uh, the professional equipment, Umatic, Betacam, digital Betacam, and other uh, professional formats, are all mounted at the moment on a very large table in my studio downstairs. And that's just not a good layout. So today I'm going to strip out all of that equipment and put in some racking and repopulate the whole area with the, uh, all that equipment plus some more. Now a lot of people, everybody is going to say, well why don't you use 19 inch racks for this equipment? And the answer is, there's just not enough space. I have to work with the space I've got, but what I want to do is make better use of that space to get more equipment in and make it easier to access if I need to service one particular machine. So uh, let me show you what's in the equipment uh, at the moment, what the machines are there, and uh, then we'll uh, start stripping it out, and uh, then we'll have to build all the racks up, um, shelving, and then repopulate and connect it all up and get it working. This is uh, several days work. So this is the area we're going to be working on. As you can see, it's a wholly unacceptable solution at the moment. Uh, let me show you uh, what equipment we have here. We start with a PC which does um, DV and also SDI capture on the right there. Then a couple of Umatic machines. The lower Umatic I don't tend to use very much at the moment and that's one of the things I'd like to be able to fix. Then this one is connected uh, via dub connectors to a digital time base corrector there. And I have another one of those digital time base correctors and I want to be able to make use of that too. Also hiding in here is a domestic uh, Betamax from Sony. Moving up, we'll move the screen out of the way. A digital Betacam player, Betacam SP. So the digital Betacam is connected via SDI to that PC, although that's a problem in itself. Um, I didn't have an SDI switch when I tried one, it didn't work. So I had to just use uh, patch cables, which is a fiddly affair. This uh, digital, sorry, this Betacam SP machine actually is used as part of the Umatic capture too because I found I got better results taking the output from this time base corrector and going through the Betacam SP which then goes from uh, YUV to S-Video and the S-Video from there uh, goes into the capture device which is this Sony uh, HD HDV deck and that feeds firewire to the computer. Then we have DVC Pro HD from Panasonic. That's fed, that has an SDI output. So that goes through my sort of patch cable affair into the computer SDI level. There's the time base corrector we've been talking about. Uh, SVHS machine, which uh, feeds S video to this time base corrector even though it has a time based corrector of its own. There's a DVD recorder which is used almost never as a DVD recorder but is used primarily actually as signal routing. Then a basic monitor at the top. Down here we have HD cam so that's another feed to my um, SDI patch. This DV cam is actually connected to this computer there's uh, a Canopus ADVC 1000 which gives the option of taking any of these SDI feeds and switching to Firewire depending on what the customer requires. I mentioned PC, an assortment of Digital 8 camcorders and Mini DV camcorders. PCs of course have speakers and lots of wiring and hideous stuff at the back here which includes uh, uninterruptible power supplies because the power in this area isn't great. A digital beta cam recorder which I hardly ever use but that's got SDI out. Then we have uh, Umatic. This is um, multi-standard Umatic. 
This is a pure NTSC one, so there's a great big mains transformer for this because that one is 110 volt. Another Umatic machine, which this one at the moment feeds composite video only, so I don't use that terribly often because I don't have another, or I don't have that one connected presently to a time based corrector. A couple more Super VHS machines and another TBC there. Underneath we have, and we've covered this before, PCM1630. Uh, decoder and deck there and remember we uh, came up with an ingenious solution for going from the digital output on that which is called SDIF2 uh, via this DAP deck to SPDIF and all those connections come out here to feed to a digital audio recorder so a uh, portable digital audio recorder uh, DRM 100 Mark II which takes uh, SPDIF here. So that's a pure digital route from these tapes. But that's not a very good solution. If something goes wrong here and occasionally a really horrible tape will get stuck on the mechanism in there, uh, that is a pain to dismantle and repair. Uh, the front's falling off as is common with these machines. Uh, it's horrible being underneath all this equipment. So we want to make sure that that's a lot easier to get to and clean and service. And we have uh, an error counter here which isn't even connected up for the simple reason that there's no physical space in this rack, so that needs improving. There's also some storage equipment down, stored equipment here, there's a spare um, N1700 in good working order, we've got some tapes, and back here we've got other equipment, we've got some, it's too dark for you to see, but there is some other equipment back there which is just being stored. So. You can see we have a humongous job shifting all this equipment. One of the ideas here is we're going to have shelving, some of this type of shelving that we've used here in the past. We're going to have shelving sat backwards on either side here to take the heavy equipment. And that's going to be able to go much higher up so we can make much better use of the high up space and then some lighter weight shelving going sideways which is going to include the computers and somewhere for me to be able to put my uh, you know, legs under the table and, and sit there and operate the machines. In a way it's exciting and interesting, I'm really looking forward to having the new layout but stripping all this down and getting all the cabling working again is a, a terrifying prospect. Let's get stuck in. Having uh, more or less completed this, uh, let's uh, show you what we have. And I'll go through in a bit more detail showing you close up. Let's start with the PCM1630 equipment, which consists of the uh, Umatic player there, decoder at the bottom. Then we have the uh, DAT machine, which I'd modified to allow us to uh, have a pure digital output from that and that can plug into a digital audio recorder I've got a portable digital audio recorder DR100 Mark II from Tascam for that over there we have a PCM1610 it's just a spare so it's filling up a space that I can't really use for very much else 
Also down here at the bottom we have a UPS and one of the two computers on the, uh, the system here. Moving up we have a digital Betacam recorder and that has a SDI output. When it comes to this sort of bundle here I can connect the output, the SDI output from that digital Betacam recorder or one of the other SDI enabled devices to either the SDI input of this PC or to uh, SDI to Firewire via that uh, Canopus ADVC1000. And the reason I have a bundle of cables here rather than a switch is because I found it was unreliable if I tried to use a proper SDI switch. It just the cable lengths are too long, especially with uh, one particular machine, the DVC Pro, which we'll come to later. So um, we also have some of the speaker equipment hiding around the back there and another UPS that's for this particular PC. We have the uh, first uh, Umatic machine, which is... Uh, which one is the first Umatic machine? That's a VP9000, that's um, NTSC low and high band, and there's a 110 volt transformer for that hiding around the back there. Next up is uh, a PAL Umatic machine, and that's connected to one of my two DPS375 digital time based correctors via dub connection to get the perfect results from that and that then feeds out uh, S-video and audio into... Uh, actually, it feeds it to that DV cam deck and that can go into E2E mode uh, and digitise it to DV. And of course, it's got a nice little monitor so you can see what you're doing too. And at the top then, we have one more Umatic, which is NTSC PAL C-CAM but that's uh, low band only for, uh, well in particular for NTSC, so that's why I needed this one as well. And these two other machines, that one and that one, are connected via a switch. Uh, so they're connected at composite video level because they don't have dub outputs. Uh, and that switch goes to that digital time based corrector uh, and then via the, you can just about see, ADVC55 to uh, DV capture there. Further up we have some uh, SVHS equipment which also can be routed to the uh, time-based corrector of course via S-video rather than composite. And we just have that JVC is feeding the um, Panasonic. The one at the machine, top of the machine there is not presently connected. Uh, neither is that one but that looks quite a nice machine. That could be quite a useful piece of kit to get connected up later. And at the top there, also not connected, I need to test it again, is a Betamax NTSC machine that records and plays in the very high quality, um, long, sorry, short running time, high speed, beta 1 uh, speed, because NTSC beta had three speed uh, operations. Moving around here we have a, a TV which is acting as a monitor which uh, is connected to the output of that time base corrector. This uh, DV cam we've already mentioned and the ADVC1000. Uh, there's a, another DV cam, a DSR11 and that's connected to the other computer here as is the HDV deck. But the HDV deck has another very important function that is used to digitize the uh, output from the Umatic on the right hand side here on the other computer. So let's move over to the right hand side. So slightly hiding behind my new monitor. I had to change the monitor. My previous one uh, didn't fit in the space. There's a UVW 1800p recorder uh, which uh, Betacam SP and that um, feeds the HDV deck for digitization and feeding it is the output of another one of those DPS 375 time based correctors you can just about make out at the bottom there and that is fed via dub signal from this Umatic so I can digitize two Umatics at once both with full digital time based corrector 
uh, and dub, dub signals and digital dropout compensators. So that's the, the full works. There's a time-based corrector there, which is for VHS, SVHS and beta. And we have an HD cam, which has got SDI output, which feeds to the SDI bundle we mentioned earlier. At the top, we have DVC Pro HD. Again, that has SDI output, which feeds to the bundle. And that will do just about any uh, DVC Pro tape variant. That does all four tape sizes, PAL and NTSC, DVC Pro regular, 50 and HD. So that pretty much has everything covered. Ah, lower down, this is something I really wanted to show you. This is a control panel to this Sony professional monitor that I was given a while ago. Uh, and it has these various inputs here. Uh, the slight limitation on this is that you know, it's got composite and YC and RGB and component, but actually they all, all of these share the same uh, input sockets at the back. So you can only have one type of those connected, which is a bit of a pity. So I've got component connected to the HDV deck up there. And this has an option for SDI input. Um, so I've got two SDI inputs. One is connected to this DigiBeta recorder. The other is connected to the DVC Pro, which leaves the HD cam with no way of connecting to this. Well, it happens that the HD cam has uh, an RGB output. It's uh, you know a, a, an old computer interface. So that's connected to the computer input here. Now uh, let's uh, power it up. So if I switch on this DigiBeta, switch on this monitor, and I think it's SDI1 I've got it connected to. I haven't done the labels for this one yet. Press SDI1, see if that's right. There we go. So uh, that's the uh, test signal and color bars from this DigiBeta that's been fed um, via SDI to this as a pure digital connection. And the sound is coming from these two built-in speakers, which are absolutely wonderful. So it's really nice to have this professional monitor here. There's also a, a menu setting here where we can set up various things on this uh, monitor. Right, so option A is this SDI input, but no option B installed. So if I could get another one of those options, I could have uh, two more SDI inputs, which would be handy. And it appears that I can um, control these... Uh, signals here, these functions here, via a remote parallel connector. Now one thing I do think is a little odd though, is this is a digital connection from that DigiBeta, and yet the transition here from green to, is that magenta, isn't very good. There seems to be a bit of a black line down the middle. Uh, and yet a much cheaper monitor with an analog input can seem to do a better job. So uh, anybody any idea why that might be the case? Let's have a look at this uh, fairly modest little sharp monitor. And that gives a, a much better transition. In fact, it's pretty much perfect. So I do wonder why that's not as good as it could be. But um, nonetheless, I absolutely love this monitor. It's really helpful. It's uh, got lots of inputs and uh, it's exactly what I need. A few more things I wanted to show you. There's, uh, you may have noticed, LED lighting everywhere. And it's been carefully set up so that when I'm sat here, uh, I shouldn't be able to be looking directly at any of the, the lights. It's all reflected. So that works rather well and gives me good uh, visibility of everything I need to see without having reflections on the screens. Now you might see there's a bit of a space there. Why is there such a great big gap there? I mean, it's almost like somebody had left a space there for a obscure professional video recorder of a, a weird format that uh, we haven't covered before. Mm. Watch this channel. I've been thinking hard about access all times. So, you know, it's a compromise always, but I've tried to make it so that I can get to everything. And I can pretty much get to all the cabling that I need to without too much trouble. And one of the things I've done here is this bench here with the keyboard on it uh, is not in any way tied in so I can pull that out and give myself better access if I need to anywhere 
around here I can use a little step ladder and get good access to everything. Something else I wanted to show you in the uh, DV area here we have this um, firewire switch box and that allows me to connect to any of my firewire devices and because I also have switches here to power up many of those devices I can just switch on and quickly use whichever one of these I need to use. So what do I have? So it's the Canopus which is used for uh, SVHS and the low band pneumatics. DV cam which is that DV cam which is also used for the really nice uh, pneumatic arrangement on this side. Digital 8 and Video 8 uh, so that's one of these uh, Digital 8 camcorders. Mini DV is that little Mini DV there, but of course you could also use uh, DV Cam Deck sometimes. NTSC 8, what that is, is a dedicated NTSC uh, DV, uh, sorry, Digital 8 machine, uh, because the power ones can throw a bit of a paddy uh, if there's gaps in NTSC recordings. It throws the firewire. So uh, having a pure NTSC one is useful. A line, that's an interesting one. That's this uh, slightly modified uh, digital 8 machine which uh, I can access the adjusters, the head guide adjusters, and I can adjust those for tapes which have misaligned recordings, which is painfully frequent in fact. And then the ADVC 1000, which of course is the SDI to DV connection box there. And I should point out that this is just part of my studio. I have another complete rig over here, uh, which includes some of the same things like the ADVC 1000 and firewire switching and the likes, and lots of uh, Super VHS and more uh, DVC Pro and uh, digital beta cam. Oh, there's a rather nice uh, vector scope here. It's SDI only. But um, yes, maybe I could connect that to this system. Why don't I throw the um, throw that in there? Because it's not doing anything at the moment. And uh, learn a little bit more about vector scopes. Uh, and elsewhere on these racks, we have other formats. Lots of um, beta, including NTSC. There's Laserdisc there. Uh, and over here we have already looked at a lot of this audio equipment, huge amount of audio equipment, all kinds of obscure audio formats, including over there. And we have uh, N1500, N1700, uh, V2000, SVC and uh, M2 over here. So uh, a really huge range of uh, audio and video formats we cover in this studio. Well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching me set up this part of my studio. Please remember to like, share and especially subscribe. And I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.